Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I will be sharing with you a DIY recipe for your hair which will help it grow much stronger than before using fenugreek, amla, and aloe vera. As usual, I will give you all the information I can about each ingredient and I will show you the recipe and you can try it out for yourself. As you know, I've been experimenting with different combinations for different recipes and using it up and trying something new until I find my perfect fit. So with that being said, every once in a while I will be looking up and down on my notebook because I didn't have everything memorized because I'm not really <laughs> a specialist in herbs and whatnot. So. I want to kind of get it right. So for a little bit of history, fenugreek is an annual herb that belongs to the... I can't pronounce this so I will leave <laughs> the word here, but it belongs to the soy family and it is predominantly based in the Southeast Asian country regions, mostly in India, and it is used for hair, it is used for your skin, and an herb to cook with. Each way you use fenugreek has a completely different like benefit. Depending on what you're using it for, you might get different results and different perks. Amla is an Indian gooseberry that is found in India, of course, some Southeast Asian culture, cultures, countries, and the Middle East. Many use it for its medicinal purposes, so for like high cholesterol and like persistent heartburn, but um, we're using it topically for our hair. Thank, thank you cats. Sorry about that, my cat wanted to stretch and move the camera, but yes, we are using it for our hair. If you've seen my previous hair oil recipe video, you will kind of know a little bit of the history of aloe vera and that is a succulent plant that's found in the Arabian Peninsula and um, sorry I'm getting a lot of text messages right now but it grows in mild tropical areas and that too has a lot of benefits depending on what you're using it for. A lot of people use it for medicine, for their skin, and also for their hair. So the gel part is used for burns and cuts and acne and dry skin and cold sores and all of that stuff. And the latex part is basically ingested with other ingredients and that's used to kind of aid your constipation and your digestive system. But again, I would advise looking into before taking any of these herbs internally for medicinal purposes. So I would talk to your doctor before testing things out on your own and experimenting because if it goes completely wrong, then that's all on you if you don't do your own research first. The pros and the cons for all of these ingredients. It is really, 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 really good for your skin, but again, we want to focus on our hair because that's what I'm working on repairing, and you probably are too since you're watching this video. It fights dandruff, it creates shiny conditioned hair, it helps promote hair growth, it prevents premature graying, which they all do, so you'll hear this a lot over and over and over with basically all of the herbs that we're using. It has anti-inflammatory properties. It regulates the sebum production, which is the secretion of oil from your scalp to your hair, and um, it kind of helps balance it out. Some people secrete more oil than others, which is why a lot of people complain about having oily hair if they don't wash it often, and some people don't need to. So it depends on your hair type and what your skin wants to do. It's also a really good washing and cleansing agent so if you're like me who don't use shampoo and other harsh chemicals in your hair to cleanse it um, this is a good way to keep that balance and cleanliness within your scalp and your hair and it's giving you a thousand more benefits along with it at the same time. It helps give volume and strength and shine and luster. And it has high levels of photoestrogen, which imitates the estrogen's functions, so that helps prevent hair loss. So it is 
thickening your hair and slowing down the process of hair loss. As far as the cons go, I haven't found any topically, so putting it on top of your scalp for hair growth purposes, there hasn't really been any cons that I've found. All of which I did find is if you're taking this internally. And I will repeat and repeat and repeat. Do not do anything <laughs> internally until you get it checked with your doctor and you get the okay and you get the regulations of how much you're supposed to be using and you know the amount of you know intake that you're you know doing with any of this stuff. If you are taking it internally, some of the cons you will get diarrhea, you'll have stomach upset, bloating, gas, dizziness, headaches. Uh, I wouldn't really call this one a con, <laughs> but it will make your urine smell like maple syrup and I don't know about you but I would much rather my pee smell like maple syrup instead of pee so I wouldn't really say that that's a con but you'll also have coughing, wheezing, facial swelling, severe allergic reactions and hypersensitive people and it might lower your blood sugar so if you have a problem with that I would be really really careful um, it causes nasal congestion and it's really not good if you have a peanut or chickpea allergy because it kind of belongs in the same family. One of the things that were kind of alarming to me taking it internally and they wouldn't advise it either is that they wouldn't suggest taking it if you're pregnant because it does imitate uterine contractions so you don't want to have false contractions and it might be unsafe as well for those who have hormonal based cancers. So um, that might mess with your system. So you would know already whether it's a good idea or not so good idea if you speak with your doctor or specialist about this before you're internally taking it. But topically, I couldn't find anything. As far as Amla goes, it helps strengthen your hair. It reduces premature graying, of course. It stimulates hair growth, prevents hair loss. It prevents dandruff and dry scalp, it treats parasitic hair infections and scalp infections and like bacteria and all that stuff so it'll kill lice, kill the fungus, kill all of that stuff so again this is good to use on your scalp if you want to keep it clean or push back your wash days and it'll reduce like the buildup and all of that stuff from everything that you're putting into your hair so it'll kind of keep that balance. It is full of vitamins C, B5, B6, vitamins A, polyphenols, amino acids, proteins. It's full of carbohydrates and calcium and magnesium and iron and carotene and alkaloids, like so many things. Also, you know, galatanis and pectin and it's just, it has a lot. <laughs> and again, as far as the cons go, I haven't found any cons. Topically, it's really not associated with that many side effects in general, but it has been noted that uh, it might trigger lichen planus pigmentosis. I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. Basically, it's just brown and grayish brown patches that develop on your forehead and your temple and also your neck. So, like, that might develop from using oil you may want to be more careful and kind of check it out first and test it on a small part of your skin also it might cause an allergic reaction or inflammation in your skin so test it first and finally for the aloe vera it is full of so many good things it has anti-inflammatory actions that help reduce your skin irritation it has enzymes and fatty acids. It helps moisturize your hair and your skin. It is full of vitamins E, vitamins A, vitamins C, B12. It has choline content that help nourish and strengthen your hair. It is full of minerals and it has copper and zinc and it alleviates itching, reduces dandruff, helps prevent lice. It helps retain water and moisture in your hair. So if you have a lot of dry skin and dry hair and have trouble with keeping it moisturized, aloe vera might be something that will help you out in the long run to kind of retain that moisture. It helps scalps that are affected by psoriasis and seborrhea, I 
think that's how you say it. And it just promotes hair growth. I would definitely add aloe vera into any of your recipes, whether you're following this one or any of the previous ones that I've made or you're creating your own. Aloe vera is definitely something that you should add into your mix. But again, I will still give you the cons of everything, so aloe vera is just something you have to be careful with. It does cause allergic reactions, so you would have to test it on a small portion of your skin to see if you even have a reaction because you don't want to just slap it on your head and then say oops later when you're <laughs> miserable. It says be careful with those who have an allergy to onions and tulips <laughs> and garlic and it does have, I mean like you can have contact dermatitis or skin rashes that might develop from using aloe vera so just really you gotta be careful. And there is phototoxicity, so it might have a skin irritation that's equivalent to sunburn. And if you're taking this orally, you might have an electrolyte imbalance, you might be vomiting, you might have diarrhea, and you might have colon and kidney problems. So, talk to your doctor. So those were the three base ingredients that I used. So I will show you exactly how I created this oil mixture and then I will give you more information on the little tidbits I added into the recipe. As I was waiting for my fenugreek powder to come in the mail, I was lucky enough to come across this in the supermarket for $2, so I used my mortar to grind it into powder. I sliced one third of an aloe vera leaf that I used in my last oil recipe and I cut it into pieces. Next, I added two cups of unrefined virgin coconut oil to a hot pot. Add in your aloe vera pieces and let it cook down for a little bit. Next, add roughly three tablespoons of the ground fenugreek powder and two tablespoons of the omelet powder. Add about 10 to 15 drops or more or less or whatever you prefer of the peppermint oil and let it simmer down for a couple of minutes. Mash and squeeze out the aloe vera pieces and pour the oil into a jar after it cools off. could use different ingredients for the oil portion of this mixture. So you could use olive oil, you could use avocado oil, you could use any of the oils. I used coconut oil as a base because it is really, really good for um, keeping in that moisture in your hair. It helps protect it from the sun and environment. It helps dandruff treatment, it helps prevent hair loss, and also prevents lice. It gives your hair shine and luster, and it repairs and revitalizes hair breakage and split ends, which is what I've been struggling with since I've been pretty bad with keeping up with my regular hair regimen during this quarantine and I had to trim a lot of my hair off to do damage control and prevention before the split ends got out of control and I kind of wanted to even it out anyways. I do like it because it does prevent hydro fatigue in your hair because it retains moisture so my hair really doesn't feel dry often or even at all. My main problem becomes doing too much and that is a con of using 
coconut oil because it does have oil buildup and it'll just keep building and building and building until your hair feels just like super oily but then it just doesn't feel like your hair is taking in anything so it, there is such a thing as too much so that could be a problem and because it is heavy it might weigh your hair down for me it doesn't really make a difference because my hair is curly and fluffy anyways yes it does weigh it down because my hair is usually out but this is kind of how I like it sometimes so I can kind of alter how much I use and how much I don't but if your hair is much thinner and it can't handle a lot of oil I would be very very I would be very frugal with the amount of oil that I'm putting into my hair if it's thin and takes on the oil or you can always just kind of rinse it out after you apply it to your hair for a little bit so it'll still work and finally I like using peppermint because for one I like the way it smells and also it stimulates blood flow to your roots and your scalp and your head so that in turn kind of boosts your hair growth and kind of keeps things circulating up there so it'll it'll help you out <laughs> but just for a side note so you're not kind of confused or panicking this is what the oil might look like at times if it's too cold because coconut oil does harden when it's at a lower temperature so all you have to do when you're ready to use your oil if it's too hard to really move or use just put it in a bowl or a pot or in the sink or something with hot water and wait for it to melt I like doing that because it kind of turns it into a hot oil treatment and it feels really nice on your scalp so when you're massaging it in it'll feel like a real spa treatment I guess and that heat will help stimulate the circulation in your hair as well as massaging and putting those nutrients and vitamins and everything into your skin and into your hair follicles. Don't have a heart attack about the way your oil might look after you create it and it's in your jar and it's getting cold and hard so it remelts and hardens again. But yeah that's basically it. As far as preference wise so far out of the oils that I have created I do like the neem a little bit better because of how my curls turn out. This, I feel, is better for my scalp itself, but my hair isn't necessarily listening to me. But again, I do hit awkward phases within my hair, which is why I kind of put it up because it wasn't like listening to me. <laughs> but um, I feel like I'm at a middle awkward stage with my hair and curls again. Yeah, every once in a while it'll kind of be off but that's all right it's still growing and it's much thicker than it used to be and it's getting a lot longer um, so yeah anyways thanks so much for stopping by for watching hopefully you try out this recipe and experiment with other flavors of your own and let me know your combinations and what you think is much better and what works for you and I like treating this information so um, yeah leave a comment below and let me and everyone else who watches know so <laughs> please hit that like button and that subscribe button if you are new and I will see you lovelies in my next video